Hi everyone, good to be with you again for this Wednesday Connect. As we come together every Wednesday talking about the church. Well, basically, we are talking about you and me and everybody else that belongs to Jesus because we are the church. I think we discovered this truth again when lockdown started yeah, over a year ago, can you believe it? Uh, when there was a hard lockdown, everyone was sitting at home, people were panicking, others were enjoying the time alone with the family. But there's something else that happened within the church where people started realizing that we, the people, are the church. Not the building, not the organization, but we, the people. And I believe this is God's design for the church. And I want to talk to you a little bit about missional today, the church being missional. Now, we can distinguish between being missionary which is really what we do as our activities of the church, to go out and spread the gospel. That is, uh, to be a missionary, is one that is sent with a purpose to spread the gospel and to build God's kingdom in that way. Or missionary is the activities of the church when we go out and reach people with the gospel. But when we talk about missional, it is our position as the church towards the world. In everything that we do, every activity, Everything that happens on a Sunday, from a Monday to a Saturday, the activities in that sense is missional because it is our perspective or our context and towards the world. So what is central to a missional church is the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news as we know it. What good news? That Jesus died for the sin of the world that we can bring reconciliation between God, and, uh, between God and man by spreading the good news to say that your sins are paid for by Jesus. You are forgiven, but it takes repentance to come into this place. In other words, you need to turn away from your sin, turn away from the world, and turn towards Jesus and what He has done. You need to believe in what He has done for you, and then it will become a reality that He paid the full price for your sin. You're forgiven now, washed and cleansed, and you become born again part of the kingdom of God. Now, this is what we do. So is our position missional as a church? Do we see ourselves at home on a Sunday, on a Saturday, on a Monday to Friday? Do we see ourselves as being missional, intentional about reaching the world with the gospel? Now, we can sometimes use words and mostly we use action because people look at us as Christians and they want to see Christ in us. They want to see us act like Jesus. That's why we wear sometimes a little bands called WWJD, What Would Jesus Do? To remind us again of what would Jesus do in this situation? He would love, he would rebuke, he would forgive. All these different things in the Bible, different responses to different things, but central to being missional is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Now there's three things I want to mention to you quickly here. First is the priesthood of believers, which we find in 1 Peter 2 verse 5 to 9 when we talk about a priesthood. Now, you've heard this term, the priesthood of believers. Now, the priesthood of believers came into the church at a later stage after the church was established, after people had been going for a long time in church, and there was this hierarchy that was set out in the church with the Pope at the top and uh, priesthood or those that are called to full-time at the top and other people going down in that order. But the priesthood of believers is pointing to every Christian having a function in the church. And that is what I want to really tell you today. That there is the 1 Corinthians 12 giftings, which is the charismatic gifts. We have Romans 8 giftings, administrative gifts and so forth. And these gifts need to be used by the people in the church to reach people. And it is for the common good, the Bible says. Your spiritual gifting that you have is for the common good. Therefore, you are the priesthood of believers. You are there to function from Monday to Sunday. You are there to function every day of the week, wherever you are. This is being missional and not just missionaries. This is not just gathering under one big head and so it flows down. Now, this is also where we come to the second part. It does not replace those ordained as priests or full-time ministers, Ephesians chapter 4, speaks about the fivefold ministry, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. Now we have the fivefold ministry, which is for equipping of the saints. It doesn't replace that. Those still need to be in the church. But I do believe we need to bring it together in a closer relationship with one another, where there is equipping taking place of the saints functioning within the charismatic gifts 1 corinthians chapter 12 you can go read the charismatic gifts there 
and you can see how we can function as a missional church. In other words, we are on the mission that Jesus started and our life is about this mission every day of our lives. This doesn't leave it up to full-time workers in the church. This doesn't leave it up to a priest or a pope or a person at the top to carry all of that of the church, but it leaves it up to every person in the church. Every person is responsible to have a missional mindset towards the world and the gospel being central to that message that you preach. Let us look at the third part there, We're talking about priesthood. So the first one was priesthood of believers. It was Peter, 1 Peter 2 verse 5 to 9, we're going to read it to you now. Then there's the priesthood of ordained pastors or priests. Acts 14 verse 23, Romans 15 verse 16, 1 Timothy 5 17, Titus 1 5. James 5, 14 to 15. There's so many scriptures on that one. And then the last one is the high priesthood of Jesus Christ, which is Hebrews 3 verse 1. He is our high priest in heaven. In other words, we need to come under the head. The Bible says he's the cornerstone. We need to allow Jesus to lead his church well through his leaders that will equip the people. And in this way, the people are positioned in every home, in every workplace, on every street corner, in every shopping center, on every sports field, in every sphere of life. You and I are everywhere. The church is powerful. The church is positioned to reach the world. But we need to bring it together in this structure. Now let me read to you 1 Peter 2. I'm just going to open it up here quickly. 1 Peter 2, verse 4 to 5, I'm going to read to you. And uh, we can actually read it a little bit further than that. Let me just open it up here on my Bible app. Just give me a sec here. We're going to go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 2. From verse 4 says, As you come to Him, the living stone... Rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to Him. You also, like living stones, are being built up or built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in Him will never be put to shame. Verse 7 says, Now to you who believe, this stone is precious, Jesus. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are, listen to this, this is describing this priesthood of believers now that I want to say to you. We come to Christ. He is the cornerstone. We are built into the building as spiritual stones, not in a temple format anymore, not into a building format, not as bricks anymore, but as spiritual stones, we are built into the building, which is the church of Jesus Christ. You and I, when we come to Christ, believe in Christ, belong to Christ now, we are built into this building as spiritual stones, and we are built upon the cornerstone, Jesus Christ. Listen to verse 9, it says, But you are a chosen people. This is describing what you look like as the church. A royal priesthood. Listen there, a priesthood, and that's the priesthood of believers. A holy nation, a nation set apart for God all by itself, citizenship in heaven. God's special possession, you belong to God, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into the wonderful light. Amen. That's what I want to share with you today about being the church is that you and I are that royal priesthood. I love it. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the wonderful light. You and I, when we function in these places of structure, we must let the structure be fluid between those that are called to be equipping ministries and those that are, are, are functioning as congregants. In other words, you don't have a lesser role, you have a different role. One is to equip, one is to function within the equipping. Amen. And so as you are equipped in your spiritual gifts, 
Let us be the spiritual stones built up into this temple now, the church of Jesus Christ. This is a formidable army. This is Ezekiel 37, as, as it was speaking to Israel then, that when we see the dry bones, those bones can live again as God's breath is breathed into them. The Spirit of God. May the Spirit of God come upon the church again to be this powerful army that God has called us to be, a vast army that will stand up full of the Spirit of God, functioning in the gifts of God. And those that are called to equip, that they will equip and not hold the power or the authority or the title within themselves but that they will function in the church to bring together a beautiful beautiful priesthood of believers and that is my message to you today be the priesthood of believers that God has called you to be be the royal royal priesthood be the holy nation be the chosen possession be the one that stands out in this dark age that we live in right now where the light of the church will shine again because Jesus Christ is the cornerstone God bless you all as you come again together for this Wednesday Connect. And may your life be enriched today by the Word of God. Go and study the Word. Go and meditate on the Word. Go and, go and set yourself apart in prayer and fasting before the Lord. And you will see God will use you right where you are as a priesthood of believers. We are the church of Jesus Christ. God bless you on this beautiful Wednesday and as you celebrate being the church of Jesus. Amen.